before that, mm -hmm. what you should know about the IRS tax bracket update for 2024 is that the increase in the threshold is about 5.4%. 5, 5 the adjustment means that a larger portion of your income will be taxed at a lower rate compared to last year. And this is the stuff where IRS is like, what did you do? It just means that because of inflation, they're trying to help us out. And hey, if you were in this high tax bracket, they moved it. So now maybe you're in a lower one, right? Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps. Welcome back, folks. It's a, This is episode 13 of It's About Your Paycheck. We're talking about tax brackets and how that's going to impact you on your paycheck. Mm -hmm. But before we get into that, how you doing, Walt? Man, I am good. I am I'm good. Man. Good. I'm, I'm good. I'm just thinking about it. Got to be grateful. Yeah. Mindful. Man. I'm always coming with that, man. But we all go through things in life, personally, professionally, with our friends, our loved ones, man. And we just got to be mindful of that sometimes. And yeah, sometimes I think we get lost and we don't. Yeah. And we don't remember the little things in life that we have to be grateful for that word. There's, there's somebody else that doesn't have shelter today. Yeah. There's somebody else that doesn't, yep. doesn't have a meal. They have to skip a meal that the family don't have heat during this winter time and stuff. There's somebody else that's going through way worse yep. than we are not to take away from what we're going through because no, it is valid, yeah. but just to be mindful and put things in perspective, like, man, you're probably more blessed than you think you are. Absolutely. And I I always take it back to this moment in time where, so my mom was a nurse for 47 years, right? Mm -hmm. And she spent most of her time at extended care facilities. And that means basically if you've gotten injured so badly that you can't be at home anymore, you need round the clock, unfortunately. And there was this patient she had, Nick, RIP Nick, man, he was a good dude. Mm -hmm. And he, he and my mom was actually like on the news real quick because she discovered that he was still brain alive. They thought he Ooh. was they thought he he was paralyzed. He was paralyzed. Not he was paralyzed. His whole body couldn't move anything. Wow. And they kept him in a bed and they thought that he was also brain dead. Mm. But my mom would talk to him every time she came to care for him. She would talk to him and talk to him and talk to him. What she noticed was he was moving his eyes. Wow. To her. Yeah. And she's the one that called in like the, the their occupational there. I don't know, whatever the, the specialist was to evaluate and to see if what's going on. They found out that he was actually alive in his brain. They gave him a tool, a computer that he can move. He could function with his eye, his blinking his eyes. He was able to send emails to his son. He was wow. able to communicate with his world because of that. Before that, he was trapped in there. Nobody knew he was thinking and whatever. Like wow. whenever I'm wow. going through bad stuff, I think about Nick and I'm like, there could be no worse hell for a human than that. This episode is presented by Time Track Go the simply better employee time clock software that is going to make your life easier. In addition to the unique graphical employee time card that helps you quickly identify and fix mistakes, TimeTrack Go is excited to announce it's now compatible with QuickBooks Desktop, providing effortless data transfer and reduced errors. TimeTrack Go will not only save you time and money each week, but the easy to understand user interface and the ability to turn an ordinary tablet into an employee time clock will get you and your team up and going in just minutes. Find out what a simply better solution can do for your business. To learn more and sign up for your 14 day free trial, go to www.timetrackgo.com. That's T I M E T R A K Go.com or call 888-321-9922. Let's go. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So when, and, and it was, yep. And it was for a long time that, that it went undone. I'm not going to call out who was doing this to him, but one of the stories that my mom said was like, there were people, loved ones around him, cursing him out. They were like, F you, you're a dumb, you're a this, ah, they should just pull the plug. He's dead in there. Ah, it's worth nothing. He heard wow. all that. He heard all that. And he was, he was communicating that in the emails. I heard this one when they said this. I heard that one when they said this. Can you, it's giving me chills right now. But anyway, that's what I think about 
when I'm going through tough times, I go, I think about Nick because he had the strength to live on many years past that, Mm -hmm. right? He's since passed away, but he lived for many years like that. I, they would take him out and he would be at parties and he was able to come to home for an hour or two at a part of home party or whatever. And they would take him back to the facility. Like he lived a bit because my yeah. mom realized that he had a life, right? Oh, man. Yeah. But so again, when I'm going through some tough times, I'm like, there's nothing worse than that. So I'm good. Puts, puts it in perspective, right? Yeah. yeah puts man. it in perspective. And that must have been until your mom realized that I could only imagine how lonely he must have yeah. felt sitting there knowing that all these people that supposedly love him are saying this stuff and yep. there's nothing he can really do about it. Oh man, Ugh. that's mm-hmm. tough. Mm-hmm. It's tough, but you put it in perspective, man. That's what I do. I know. And I know it's, it doesn't discount what we go. Like you said, it doesn't discount what you're going through and all that, but that I just, that's, that helps me get through things perspective. Thank you for sharing that, man. Yeah, no doubt. This folks is it's about your paycheck and again irs tax brackets have updated and we're talking about how that is impacting our paychecks Mm -hmm. and i have i don't know what five items to share and then we're going to go through a little bit we're going to talk about the two sides of whether tax should we be taxed or not taxed what does tax do for us like why we get taxed? i know i don't know if folks pay attention to those conspiracy theories out there oh tax is illegal and we shouldn't be taxed and the government can't tax us and that We're going to share some bits on both of those. But before that, Mm -hmm. what you should know about the IRS tax bracket update for 2024 is that the increase in the threshold is about 5.4%. The adjustment means that a larger portion of your income will be taxed at a lower rate compared to last year. And this is the stuff where IRS is like, what did you do? It just means that because of inflation, they're trying to help us out and hey, if you were in this high tax bracket, they moved it. So now maybe you're in a lower one, right? (laughs) Perhaps, yes. Thank you, because we have Mm -hmm. to make sure. Because everybody's situation is different. The rule is just not like a blanketed rule. You want to probably talk to a tax professional, do a little research, go research the brackets. And it it tells you, hey, if you make this with this, you're going to get taxed this percentage. So they move those brackets. For example, if a portion of your income was previously taxed at a higher bracket, it might now fall into a lower bracket. Might. Mm -hmm. So keyword might. might. (laughs) If you've been working for a few years, you have hopefully filed taxes. Mm -hmm. Here's a sidebar. If you are an adult in America, you really should still file either way, even if you're not working. Okay, because there are sometimes benefits to folks. If you're not working and you qualify for something, you might just get money. (laughs) But people think, oh, I didn't work this year. I don't have to file. That's not necessarily true. And to Mm -hmm. file with the federal government is free. Right. So you can. So think about that. And if you're not making a lot of money at all, like right now, I believe if you don't make more than 15 or 16 thousand dollars, you get all your taxes back. Okay. I think my daughter, my oldest, still needs to file for a year or two ago when I keep getting on her and she hasn't filed. It's, yeah, it's, she got money sitting there. Yeah. But she'll learn. She's going to hit the wall hard. So with that being said, the standard deduction is also changed. So if you've been filing, you definitely know what a standard deduction is because that's the money that that's the amount that impacts how much you get back or you have mm-hmm. to pay. Mm-hmm. So the so deduction. Yeah. Let me say something about the standard deduction, right? Go so for it. the standard deduction, the reason that they have that built in is for people is you know how they say, hey, tax write-offs. So that may counteract that. So if, if you don't have enough stuff to write off, yes, and it's below that amount that the standard deduction is, yep. the IRS is saying, okay, hey, we're gonna let you use the standard deduction instead of what you're trying to write off. And that'll exactly. help you to your point, right? So yes. Thank yeah. no, that's a great call out because Dude, I still have trouble understanding and then helping fo- other folks understand it. So when you, so let's walk through a little quick scenario. Let's say you make 50 grand a year, but you want to, oh, I'm going to itemize. I'm going to write everything off. But so the writing things off means I made 50, but I want to write off 10 so that I only pay on 40. But the standard deduction for this year is 14,600. So why would you write off 10 
mm-hmm. if the government is saying, hey, standard deduction is 14600 for you, First, yep. for a single mm-hmm. thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. So then it wouldn't make sense for you to itemize in that instance. It would make sense to just take advantage of the standard deduction. Yep. So that is a big call out. And then it so to that point, it's 14600 for individuals and it's 29 thousand two hundred for married couples filing jointly this is an increase in the standard deduction which lowers your taxable income resulting in a lower tax burden okay so if all things remain the same you should pay less money should could might Yep. Right. We're... <laughs> hey, I, I forget who it was, but somebody says my MIT. Yep. That's <laughs> not. No. <laughs> so not my. That is me. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just a, an amazing call out for us. So that's the impact for these tax brackets. So you should get a little bit more money back next year. Not it, it could possibly impact your paycheck. And there was a, in my research, I did find, oh, this could impact your paycheck on a week to, eh, that is, maybe. It depends on how it is. And again, right? Maybe, might, maybe. Yep. <laughs> it, 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 there's so many factors into it, right? It, dep- yes. it depends on your pay frequency because yes. the taxes the taxes that someone pays yep. on a bi-weekly frequency is different than a person on a weekly or semi-monthly mm-hmm. or semi-annual. Or monthly, like, yeah. You know, or monthly. So there's so many different things that you have to think about because everybody's scenario is different. Yeah. Ooh, and sidebar, because we have a bunch of friends in the UK, we learned that getting paid monthly overseas is normal. Yes. Folks in the UK get paid once a month. Yeah. And they can't see it any other way. They love it because it's all about what you used to. Now, in the US, it's not very common. It used to be common in education. Yeah. Um, If you're still getting paid monthly, God bless you. But it's not very common in the US. What are you going to say? There was one. I forgot who it was that told us that. It may have been Adrian. I know it was one of the guests that we have that told us about that 13th month. Oh, yes. Global payroll. Yeah, the global yes. payroll stuff. Yeah. The thir- oh, Let's not confuse. Yes. <laughs> it's basically a... Oh, I don't even want to... Get- we have to get yeah, into yeah, it yeah, another... Sorry. We, we sorry, talk folks. about that on another show. No, no, no. It's a good one because I'm just trying to prevent myself from going down the rabbit hole. Yeah. But the 13th month, yes. They get- it's it's, it's a little grimy too, though. Because what they do is they take your salary, they divide it by 13, and they only give you the 13th payment at it's a they call it's like a bonus. Yeah. Holiday bonus at the end of the year end. Thir- eh. So it's you're not getting more. You just divided my pay by 13 and you're giving me two months in one. So mm-hmm. anywho, but look, if y'all know about overseas, if you're from the overseas, you listen, tell us, could jump on the yeah. show like we're on LinkedIn mainly. Mm-hmm. And then the last takeaway here for us, for paycheck folks, right? This is what your paycheck is. Since these changes affect effectively reduce the amount of tax withheld from each check, many taxpayers, employees may see a slight increase in their net pay. May. May. <laughs> <laughs> the actual impact on individual paychecks will vary depending on the taxpayer's income level filing status, and other factors such as deductions and credits that may qualify for. Yeah, This is what I was going to, what I was thinking about when, you know, when you may and maybe every, and again, folks, everybody's tax situation is different. It's unique. And there's so many rules and you don't know. So yes, with the advent of pay transparency, we can talk about gross pay to each other, but we shouldn't be talking about how, Oh, what's your net? What do you pay? And how come you got more? How come you made the same, but you got more and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, folks. It, it, and that's where that's where I warn against, right? Yeah. Like David told us, we can't fire people anymore <laughs> for talking oh about pay. Yeah. We can't prevent you. Because back in the day, that was normal. Companies oh, would companies say, right. you are yeah. not allowed to share pay information, period. You get fired. Yeah. Yeah, but the rules have changed. Pay transparency is trying to change that. And folks, if you if you're not familiar with tra- pay transparency, it just means that companies now have to post the range that they're paying for any particular position, right? 
And what it guards against is men making more than women, white folks making more than brown and black folks, right? And it prevents, it's an effort to prevent that. Or, or even beyond those two categories, like nepotism, right? Oh, my nephew works for me. My nephew's the highest paid janitor in the, in the world. So you, it prevents against things like that. And, and companies have to post the range and it also makes the range realistic. So you can't say, oh, this range is zero to 300,000. No, you can't do yes. that, right? You have to base the range accordingly and, and you have to put the work into making sure the range is consistent with your market, with mm -hmm. your state, with your job, with your industry, all that good stuff. So that's what pay transparency is really a good look for employees, right? Because mm -hmm. now we should we can move confidently knowing that it's gonna get it's it's going to a better place. It's not fixed yet. It's mm -hmm. not fixed yet, but it's definitely getting to a better place, right? That we'll all be on an equal playing field as far as money and making money. But with mm -hmm. that being said, I still have a problem with because we're right where we landed on that show with David and we talked about pay transparency. It was episode 91, by the way, folks. If you want to check our other show out, it's episode 91 of It's About Payroll. And I I'm going to share some stuff on it's about your paycheck uh, platform as well but yeah pay transparency i still warn against about the details right yes you can compare gross payment you can compare gross annual amounts but the details is very individual yes if you basically what brian is saying if he and i have the same amount of years of experience we do the same job but brian gets paid 15 dollars more than i make or $2 more than I make for doing the same job, same level of experience. That is what he's saying you can speak to. Yes. What he's saying you can't speak to is the little shouldn't. intricacies or yeah, you should shouldn't. speak to is, okay, hey, I don't have any kids. Brian does have kids. Yep. But I can't say, oh, Brian, how come your, your take-home pay is more, more than mine? Yeah. How come? Ooh. That's a good example, right? So let's talk about that because, and very isolated, quick example, and because people are like, why? Perfect example is if Walt single, if we're making this about the same money, right? But Walt's paying for a single medical plan, but I'm married with kids, I'm paying for a family plan, Absolutely. but it's pre-tax. Mm -hmm. So it lowers my taxable income. It lowers the amount that I have to pay taxes on which would could result in a little bit more in my check or the same. We could he could mm -hmm. be like, how come you pay all that and we make we're coming with the same net mm -hmm. because mine is dropping my taxable income. It might drop me into a, the lower bracket. Yep. Right. How talking about brackets? Yep. It might drop me into a lower bracket, and which case our nets might be similar. Yep. And he might be like, why the hell is that? Yep. Because exactly. of the tax, because he's paying for a single medical plan, I'm paying for an expensive ass Bennett family plan. Yes. But the but the benefit to it is that it's dropping my taxable wages, and and it could drop me into a lower tax bracket. It could. You got to do the math. But oh, this is great stuff. I love it, man. I love it. Um, and it's important to know, however, that these changes do not represent a cut, a, a tax cut but rather an, an adjustment to the account for, to account for inflation. See, I, I like that. I, I really love that note because it's emphasizing the point, plain and simple. It does not rep it's not a tax cut. We nope. didn't cut taxes. Nope. They made an adjustment to account for recent inflation. Yep. So. Yeah. Yeah. And the goal is to prevent taxpayers from being pushed into higher tax brackets, right? Cause if they didn't do it, and then you make you making the same or more money. You get oh crap, inflation. Yeah, my my job gave me more money, but because of the tax brackets, now I'm in a higher tax bracket, and now I'm getting tax. It's the same crap. So it's so, IRS government did something. Thank you, to help us, possibly be in a lower one. The goal is to prevent taxpayers from being pushed in the higher tax bracket solely due to inflationary increases. As always, individual. Financial situations can vary widely. So yes. the actual impact on your paycheck may differ person to person. And that's what we have to be mindful of, folks. It really. And look, if you're stuck and you're like, I don't, 
reach out to us on LinkedIn. We're both on LinkedIn, Brian Escobar, Walter William Duncan III. We got our page about out there. It's, it's about payroll. We're on Facebook for It's About Your Paycheck for this show mm -hmm. is on mm -hmm. Facebook and it's on our website. It's about your paycheck.com. Reach out, reach out. We're here to help. If you want, you guys want to come on and talk about some stuff, come on and talk about stuff. We're talking about paychecks. What do you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah this I is have... good stuff, man. I love it. Before we move on to this yeah. next section, the debate section that we have, sure, sure. I, I want to share a story. And I think I've shared this story a little bit before in prior episodes, but I had a situation where I had a set of twins that I were processed payroll for, right? Interesting. And so they were they they started working together at the same place. And it's twins, you like, hey, same age, uh, very similar situations, mm -hmm. but one of the twins had a kid and one of them didn't. And so they compare checks because, hey, they do everything together. So they like, hey, what they were like, why does my sibling get more money than I'm getting? Mm -hmm. And so we had to go through this the explanation and say, hey, this is why, because, yes, you may be twins, but you're in two very different financial situations. Yep. That's one of you had perfect of, example you know what i'm saying like that so, and i had to help them understand and be like oh wow okay now i get it thanks yeah. for explaining that yep and then think about it what if one maybe the one that owned the, has a kid owns their own home and lives outside and the other one lives with their parents still a whole nother different i something's going to happen differently when they file taxes mm -hmm. right because again you don't know oh and another thing i used to tell folks all the time is i don't know if you even have another job and that is going to impact how much you get back and what your taxable wages are. Folks, mm -hmm. if you got two jobs and you're doing it, when you go file, it's those incomes together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's your W-2s together that put yeah. you in a tax bracket. So yeah. you may have been getting filed at a lower one at both jobs respectively. But when you go mm -hmm. combine those two together to file, boom, you're in a higher bracket now. Okay. Okay. So yeah. it's we don't know. You don't know. Everything is different. You could be trying to compare your, oh, this person got $5,000 back when we filed and this person, you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what credits they qualify for. You don't know. You don't, so, you don't know if they're married, yeah. filing jointly, filing yeah. separately. Like yeah. you don't, everybody's situation is different. Yep. 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 So the next part is we're just going to talk about, should we have taxes? Like why? It's always, again, like I had mentioned in the beginning of the show, I don't know if folks see that conspiracy theory stuff out there where it's taxes are illegal. You don't have to file. And then ask Wesley Snipes if taxes are illegal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ask Steve Harvey if taxes are illegal. My point of view is taxation is a civic duty and an investment into society, right? Okay. Can't and wait it, to hear this. Well, <laughs> Because you think about it, right? We have to, one, we have to contribute to public services, right? How, how do you think garbage comes, right? How do you think the roads get made, paved, libraries, city halls, the, the police? People want to talk about defunding the police. How, I hope you have a backup police department. Because if you defund the police, where are they going? How, the, how are they going to get funded? How are they getting paid? You know what I mean? Not every cop is a crooked cop, folks. Okay. I know I have cops in my fam, police in my family. They're good people. Yep. You know what I mean? Not every cop is a bad cop. So if you defund the police, what happens? How are you going to back that up? Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what our tax money goes to infrastructure, which is all those things, education. And you could argue education is not the greatest system. Edu that's a whole nother show, right? The overhaul of education. But in some places, public schools are amazing. Public schools are great. You know what I mean? And if you're a working person living paycheck to paycheck, regardless of how that education system, you need your kid to go somewhere during the day while you work, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, look, shout out to teachers. I heard a teacher say one time, oh, we're just glorified babysitters. No, you're not. No, you're not. Okay? You are not. Please don't discount yourself like that. You are definitely impacting these children good teachers absolutely impact the children okay mm -hmm. don't ever discount yourself like that should you make more money heck yeah, yeah heck yeah that, that's exactly what i was gonna say that's probably why they discount no they, yeah, they like, don't feel paid they don't properly. Feel appreciated. And, 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 and they're not they're, and that's the thing so the downside to it is that we because it's tax money it's not like a private unlimited thing right 
healthcare, arguable again, but if there was no healthcare, there was no clinics, if there was no ERs, we'd be in bad shape, man. And it's just, and that contributes to the overall, overall well being, right? That's one of the things. The second thing is social responsibility. People think that paying taxes is a social responsibility. You know what I mean? It ensures that the financial burden of these public goods is shared amongst the cit- among citizens. Because if paying taxes was an option, most people wouldn't pay it. And then again, how do we have this? And it would be cyclical. If we stop paying taxes, our whole way of life would crumble. And then it would rebuild. And guess what? They would say, hey, folks, we need everybody to contribute a little bit. What do we call it? Oh, let's call it a tax. Boom. It's the same thing. It's just going to be cyclical. Another argument is that it stimulates economic growth. I don't know. It, it could. The perspective from the government is that spending financed by taxes stimulates economic growth, investments in infrastructure, social programs, create jobs, promote a thriving economy, benefits everyone. It's the same thing again, right? We're pumping money, right? If we, it, because who, yes, okay, now we built this infrastructure. We have a town hall. Who's going to pick up the garbage? Who's going to teach the kids? Who's going to go do the jobs? Oh, somebody's got a job now. Boom, you make money. That person makes money, right? The whole stimulating ep- economic growth is that I'm giving Walt $100. Walt's going to go spend that $100 in a store. That store makes the $100. They're going to go spend it in another store. And it's cyclical, right? Yes. Our money is, it gets getting spent. Now, some communities are smart, right? They keep their money in the community. Right. How you go about this is we have some power over this, but these are the things that people don't we take it for granted. You jump on a bus and you jump on a subway system or you jump in a public transportation in any place. You take it for granted. That's a public work like somebody put the government put that in place. And the last one is the long term benefit is that we view taxes as an investment in the future. You know what I mean? A well-funded government has the money to make sure that they can educate the folks and they 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 can get the better education system they can mm-hmm. put more money into a hospital so if government is working properly okay i'm not talking about yes we know politicians are dirty we know there's bad apples in every group folks okay we're not really talking about that part that's a different show we're talking about if it works properly not only do you have money to satisfy now but the people the the leaders are listening to the people oh our our schools and our hospitals are bad okay no problem let's fix that because we got the money in a good system that's the way it'll work i i compare it to my hoa right our hoa fees keep going up and people keep going crazy why are they going up you know why because we had bad fiduciary let me be we had bad managers in the past and they didn't spend the money properly they didn't invest in the future properly yeah. so now the folks are dealing with the aftermath of that and we have to pay more because our leaders in the past didn't allocate the money properly so that's what we're dealing with most of the times when you're dealing with the bad apples they call them bad actors now it's so funny but when you're dealing with bad ap- apples in the bunch now we deal with bad. Now we got bad school systems. Our hospitals suck. Our this mm-hmm. stinks and that stinks and a lot. Yeah, because they're grimy. And it, look, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect system. We we talk about overhaul all the time in things, and we, we'll continue to have that debate. But done properly, mm-hmm. that is what tax money should go to. Yep. Okay. Thank you, so- sir. So what are, what are some things that can help assist and maintain this? Because I, I see you have some notes here about, I, I know it says proposed solutions, but it really seems like there's some key takeaways in how to keep this thing transparent and- Absolutely. Two things. Awareness. Yeah. Two things, right? Like you just mm-hmm. said, allocate transparently. What Radical transparency. Okay. If, if the if the government could apply Ray Dalio's method, Ray, and if, for those of you who don't know, look up Ray Dalio. They actually accuse him of, him of being cultish, and his company. But he has he manages the bit or used to. He's retired now. He's like stepping away. But his company manages the biggest investment fund in the world. Okay, and he did it. He built it by himself. Got partners, of course, along the way. 
So he, incredible. And one of his principles is radical transparency, mm -hmm. right? And people, that's that makes people uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? And especially politicians who are out there lying, right? A solution, radical transparency. Tell me where the money is going. I'm giving you tax money, but it's all math. If you're getting $10 from 10 people, you have $100. What are you doing with that $100? Yep. That's what we want to know. That's what radical transparency would be at the government tax level. They can't do that yet because they, no, oh, we got to, there's all kind of nonsense with that. And then education and awareness, right? Like what this effort, what I'm trying to do now is like, folks, it is a civic duty because if America is the greatest country in the world, it was absolutely built on taxes, right? That's it. If, if you, hey, there's beautiful country, countries out here. This is where I get very American because it's like, if you don't like it, go back. Go, nobody, not to be rude or nothing like that, but either become part of the solution because if you're not, you're part of the problem, right? Okay. That, that, that's all I'm saying, yeah. All right. So thank you for that, Brian, for sharing those things about why taxation is considered a civic duty and an investment in society. Yep. Man, I'm coming from a different angle, bro, because of- You of, hate people in your pockets. I know. No, 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 it's just like you made a couple of different points. And before I get into it, I think a lot of people, a lot of Americans feel this way. I know there's a lot of Americans that feel that share your sentiment, right? That have your ideas and say, hey, if everybody paid their part, everybody did their thing, then these things will work. I'm coming from a different angle, right? And and how that may impact in employees and Americans and how they feel how they potentially may feel about it. So number one, let me get right into it. Like taxes reduce disposable income, like increasing tax rates can result in significant reduction in disposable income for individuals, couples. It limits their ability to allocate funds towards those personal expenses, those savings, those investments for their personal financial goals. Again, 70% of we Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Yep. Increasing tax rates is not going to help that. Nope. So yeah. the complexity and compliance challenges. So this highlights the complexity of the tax code, which can be time consuming and costly for we as individuals to navigate and yeah. simplifying the tax system would alleviate these challenges, right? Because you and I have been collectively four decades of payroll experience between the both of us over four decades, and we still don't know about all the tax code. We're just like, oof, man, we can do some calcs and stuff like that and read through the circular E's, but you put the publication 15 circular E in front of a, a normal average American, they're going to be like, what the heck is this? Yeah. They're going to be like, this is Greek. What, yep. like, I don't know any of this stuff. That is the issue, right? Yep. The average American should be able to understand what the tax code is for and what the tax code means. That's how I feel about it. So this is, there's so many complexities and so many compliance challenges that Americans probably feel overwhelmed by this stuff. Yeah. Perceived inefficiencies, right? Number three, there's concerns about inefficiencies and in government spending, suggesting that not all the tax dollars are used efficiently or aligned with the American or individual priorities. And it calls for a greater transparency, fiscal responsibility, and oversight. Yeah. I think that's what it frustrates a lot of us is that it feels like there's no oversight, that the people that have put, been put in place or in charge to have oversight are not doing that, are not meeting the standard of what a lot of Americans uh, feel yeah. should be happening. Because think about it. I live in Michigan. Michigan has, in my opinion, in some areas, has some of the worst roads I've ever seen. Oh, wow. Some of the worst. Everybody complains about the roads in Michigan. If Michigan is getting tax dollars, and Ann Arbor is one of the most sought-after places to live in the country, right? And so it, so it makes me wonder, okay... Where's the money Why, going? <laughs> where is the money going? Yeah. Why do we have all these different things? Why is the water in Flint the way it is? It, people are paying taxes. 
Yep. So why isn't isn't this stuff being fixed? So I think there there is a need for that radical transparency, that radical oversight, and for for them to say, hey, this is where your tax dollars have gone, and and for them to be able to account for each everything, like yeah. you said, it's math, right? Yeah. So if you tally up everything that has been collected and you show that, hey, this is how we spent your money. I feel like I honestly don't feel like that is such a far reach for some people. Now, it may be a lot of data yeah. for people to go through, but I feel that the government should still do that to yeah. ease those critics. Like to say, hey, like those people that are skeptical about the things that government is doing with their funds, because I guarantee you, I worked for FEMA a couple of years ago or well, several years ago and and the reason we had to go out is because people were stealing from the government like government people that were working were actually ordering different things that they didn't need ordering these huge TVs ordering laptops ordering all these different things Ooh. and it would go and it would go un- unaccounted for wow. there was even there was even times there, there was it was in the news back in the day that's the, the director of FEMA or one of the high ranking officials in FEMA were were had to had to go um stand on on trial because they could not account for millions of dollars worth of missing stuff. Wow. And so what did the government agencies get funded from? From the people's taxes. Yep. So you're telling me that the people that are in charge and have oversight are stealing to 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 benefit themselves and using the tax people's uh, the taxpayers money to do that so yeah it's a slap in the face yeah you know and no so doubt. that is what these per- perceived things are so that goes to the in- inequality in the tax system right so the progressive nature of the tax system fails to address lots of loopholes and disparities that allow high income individuals to access tax mitigation strategies mm-hmm. and reduce their effective tax rate. So yeah. going back to certain people, I know people, there's certain people that say this person made this much. I think there was a report out there that said that Amazon paid less tax less taxes than a lot of Americans did. And uh, uh, Amazon is a billion dollar company. Yeah. So how, so how is Amazon able to go through all these loopholes and pay less tax? How come all these high these high earning income individuals are and the businesses are able to go through these things and pay less taxes than the average American? Like how? Yeah. yeah. How you're making Fair. millions of dollars and you didn't and you paid zero in taxes? Come on. Yep. That's the that's the issue I think a lot of Americans have. So how could we fix some of these things? These are just proposed solutions, right? I'm not saying that this is what definite what we have to definitely what we have to do. It, it, is, it will take a lot to make yeah. sure that these things are done. So these are just suggestions. So the first suggestion, suggestion is simplifying the tax code. Like there's a lot of people who advocate for a simplified tax code that reduces complexity and compliance challenges, making it more accessible for individuals to understand and navigate without yeah. professional assistance. We talk about that a lot, yeah. Just make you know it what I'm easy. Saying? Yeah. yeah, make make it easy. Make it simple. Put it, make it as simple as possible. Everything is so complex and it's just so much information. Think about that. When you go to buy a new car or buy or you sign a new con- contract for something, you, you sign a new contract for a phone or whatever. Do you read all of the small print? No. No. You don't have time. Yeah. Because you have to get going, you have to. And I saw you like, "Hey, I need to get this done." But the right thing to do would be to read through that small print to see what you're signing for, to see what you're doing. So I, I think that, and the people that are there at that, let's just say it's a car, they're not going to walk you through the small print. They say, "Oh yeah, you sign this to give you gap insurance." But yeah. what else does it say in there? Yep. Oh, right? that's just for this or in that. They just gloss yep. over. Oh, that's just. That's yep. Just... yep. They tell you just enough. It's. it's I think that the simplification and making it more, more like very more, more easier to understand would go a long way. And having that fiscal accountability, addressing those inefficiencies and having increased oversight and accountability in government spending. So you know what that means to me is that maybe there's a watchdog group that holds the government accountable. Yeah. That that is is nonprofit and they're not doing it for profit, but they're holding the government accountable and saying, hey, government, 
you need to be doing right by the people that you're that you've been sworn in to to represent or protect right and it's transparent reporting on the use of tax dollars and efforts to eliminate uh, wasteful spending are other suggested uh, solutions that fall under this fiscal accountability. And the last one is equitable adjustments. Reevaluate the tax system to ensure greater equity, closing those loopholes again and addressing the disparities. This might involve a more comprehensive review of tax brackets and deductions to create a fairer distribution of the tax burden. Again, going back to what I said, you shouldn't have very high earners, 100,000 years, millionaires, and billionaires, and more that pay less taxes than you and I do. I don't think that's fair. I think everybody should pay their fair share of taxes. You and I make more than the person that makes 40,000 in a year. We should pay more taxes than that person that makes 40,000 in a year, right? Depending on our situation, right? Mm -hmm. But there should not why do the 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 rich and the wealthy have a chance to have these loopholes and the average American doesn't? Everybody yeah. likes to say that the middle class is the the backbone of America. The middle class, it's, it's really becoming two classes. You're either rich or poor. Or you're yeah. low. You're rich or you're poor. And that should not be, in my yeah. opinion. So in conclusion, the great tax debate, it reflects the inherent tension between it being a civic duty and your personal financial well-being. Individuals grapple with uh, opposing viewpoints, finding so finding common ground may lie in the transparent allocation, like you spoke to the edu educational initi initiatives, the tax code simplification, financial accountability, and equitable adjustments. Ultimately, a balanced approach is needed, Brian, yeah. uh, that considers the collective good for all as a collective group and uh, as as Americans and the ind individual financial health. So you need that balance and it will pave a way to a more constructive and inclusive tax system. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, no doubt. I, I just want to call out one thing, uh, opinion, and it is, you said, oh, watchdog. Yeah, we're, we're the watchdogs, right? We're supposed to be out there voting. We're supposed to be out there picking our representatives. And if you're not, again, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. If you're not actively voting, then you're part of the problem. I'm sorry. If you live in America and you're an American citizen and you have the right, the privilege, the benefit to vote, right? Because think about this. Some people here have been stripped of that right to mm -hmm. vote and you're out there actively not voting, then you're part of the problem. Okay. So just keep that in mind. We are the watchdogs and no, nothing's perfect, but you need to go out there and vote and try to impact change. If you're adamant about change, you need to go be about the change. Um, yeah. I, I get what you're saying about the watchdog piece and us, us holding them accountable. I, so I understand that, but I, I honestly feel like there should be an established organization of that represents i'm not saying we need another congress but i just feel that we need a civilian i don't want to say task force but we need something like a collective group of people that are going to bring about change and hold these people accountable there are groups out there that, what are our politicians for aren't they supposed to be doing exactly that supposed aren't to be they civilians representing us in the government supposed to be making change supposed to be they're, they're supposed to be, but I think if you pick another group, that group is going to get corrupted too. For that group and this group and that group, it's like we just gotta, we have to pick the right people to represent us. And this is where the, this is where it is. This is where the battle is. Is hey, get out of my pocket, or you pick the right people to be in your pocket, like to help you with your pockets. But but how many people were the right people, and then they got in there and they were just like everybody else is doing it. Yeah, no, that, I didn't, I didn't say it was perfect. It wasn't, it's not perfect. That's why the overhaul is needed. That's why I think everybody should have term limits. There's some positions where they can hold the position forever. No, I have, I have the perfect solution. Somebody that won't have any emotions and won't do anything biased AI. 
There oh, go. God, I knew you were going to say I. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> and that, on that note, folks, I just want to call out two technical things you mentioned that, just in case folks don't know, mm. you mentioned disposable income. And I want to call out to folks in their paychecks, disposable income is defined differently than net income. So go out there and research that, look it up. It is a different definition. And then another thing you mentioned was Circular E, Publication 15, which is very common to us as payroll professionals, but probably foreign to the average employee. That's what we use to help guide our job. And it helps us with the tax brackets and stuff like mm-hmm. that. It's it's useful information. If employees want to go, you, you definitely can get some good info out of there. It's literally um, called the employee tax guide. <laughs> oh, dang. See? <laughs> but see, look at that. It's the employee tax guide, but... And, we use it as the guide for payroll professionals to help us understand our job better. So there's definitely good info there, but that's what it's an IRS publication. And that's what it is. I said employee employers tax guide. Oh, you said it's the employee. Oh, employer. Yeah. Oh, see, yeah. there you go. So again, it's not, it's not for the employee, but it impacts the employee. It helps us as employers to yes. produce a proper paycheck. But mm-hmm. again, if you want to get dangerous and savvy with the info, that's what it is. Knowledge is power, folks. You know yeah. what I mean? Knowledge is power imp- implemented properly. Yes. Um, and that's what we try to do. We just sprinkle some stuff out there, get you guys excited, go research the right things and look up these different things. Oh, my goodness. Hopefully it stirs something in you to be like, whoa, wait a minute. And this is our paycheck, folks, right? It's yeah. the first step in financial wellness. And this is the only place you get employee info about your paycheck that empowers you. That's not from your company. We have no bias, right? We don't work for your company, right? We're trying to empower you to go be a better employee for yourself. Really this is leverage your paycheck. And when I say better employee savvy, you know, what rights you have, you can go to your HR and payroll departments and say, Hey, it's my right for this. Right. And remind them, check them. There's just humans, man. They're on, we are on the other side. We're just learning. Right. We could shoot. You could have a new payroll person didn't know the rules and doing something wrong. And you just taught them something. I've learned plenty of things from my customers. Oh, my gosh. Right. Because you have to do the research. You have to go out there and check. And then you as you're checking and you're reviewing and researching all this stuff, you're coming across new information and you're learning as you go. That that is a great part about being in payroll. And one thing I wanted to clarify what I said, it's not just on the government. To your point, Brian, right? It's mm-hmm. just not on the government to to do everything right. It's on us as the employees, us as yeah. the people, yeah. and it's on the employers, right? It, yes, it right? is. Like, we, like, and- I, I, I think employers could do a better job of yep. educating their employees, Absolutely. emphasizing it, like, or yep. even emphasizing, hey, you should go check this out. Yeah. You should go check this out because you as an employer, you can't give legal tax advice to someone because everyone's situation is different but you can refer them and point them in the right direction as we said before so everybody plays their part in the system of the tax realm right so everybody plays their part when it comes to this stuff so for me that's an important nugget that i wanted to just throw in there because i feel like we could all do better yep and again, but, but uh, what I want to say is, yes, employers should should be doing things, but just like civilians or, or Americans should be holding the government accountable, mm-hmm. employees should be holding their employers accountable, right? Yes, again, don't be part of the problem. Be part of the solution. And if you want to leverage your paycheck, you got to be part of the solution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That- so I'm guessing that the key takeaways that we have here is don't be part of the problem, <laughs> part of the solution. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, and that is going to take everyone's efforts, right? Yes. In this to, to make the things better. Absolutely. We're all going to have to work together. No, nobody's way is absolutely perfect. Nope. And you have to be open-minded and it's a give and take thing. It's a yep. give and take thing. You may not be able to have it all, and you're going to have to give some concessions to to the other side of the argument, right? Yeah. Like they say in a relationship or a friendship, there's your side, there's their side, and there's the truth the in truth. the middle. That's right. We have to come together and find the truth that's in yeah. the middle. Yes, I love it.
perfect way to end. Thank you, sir. And until the next time, folks, have a good day. And check us out. This season, we're going to talk about some opportunities in payroll for you folks. So if you guys are looking for a new career, if you're young in the game and you don't know where to go with it, we are mm -hmm. going to show you how to get into payroll and be one of us, be even better than us, really, because yeah. it's exciting. It's more than just the boring stuff we talk about. There's a whole world that you, we're going to open up for you. Um, but yeah, until the next time, folks, have a good one. We love you. Peace. Peace.